Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, City Hall Mural Project Reframe Project event this evening, um, presented in conjunction with the Santa Monica Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm keeping an eye on our, our waiting room, so I'm going to just turn this over to our folks from Metzli who will introduce this event. We also have me, simultaneous Spanish translation going on here. So Susanna will talk a little bit about how you choose your language here. Um, Susanna, take it away. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, just some tech intros before we start. So I'm putting in the chat that, so we want everyone to choose your language um, since we're having simultaneous interpretation and when we get to Q&A, this will help. Um, so select the English channel if you want English or Spanish channel if you want Spanish. There's a little globe at the bottom of the screen or it might be under your three dots for more. Um, so you can also choose captions in also in your under your more. Um, so please do that so we can all make sure we can hear. And I think, and we're also recording this session. So um, both channels will be recorded. And um, all right, so, and then I'll just actually pass it off to Rossin. Great, hi, can people hear me? Yes, okay, I see some nodding heads. Um, first of all, awesome to see you all. Thank you so much for coming out um, to spend some time together tonight. Um, I was gonna first just introduce myself. My name is Rostin Wu. Um, I'm part of this team um, that's working on this Reframe City Hall mural project. I wanted to sort of throw a shout out, I guess, to um, the other folks on the team. So we have Suzanne and Laramie Kidd, who you just spoke, um, Joel Garcia over there in my upper right corner. Um, and then Robin Garcia, no relations, somewhere in this good. Oh, my second row. Um, so we're from um, a bunch of different disciplines. We're working kind of under the umbrella of Metzli projects, but we have specialties in kind of um, public process, public art, um, and ways of thinking about different kinds of representation. So that's sort of where we're coming from. Um, we've been working with the city on this initiative, and I'm going to maybe before we get into the actual activity of the day, I thought it'd be helpful to kind of give a little bit of background, where we're coming from, why we're doing what we're doing, all of that stuff. Um, we're going to have sort of a Q&A session in a, in, a, in a moment. So I'm just going to ask, because we have a pretty narrow window of time, for people to hold their questions um, till, till then. Um, really quick, like the run of show today, um, we're going to introduce sort of like who we are, what the process is, then go into this activity that we've designed, then talk about some additional teacher resources that we think could help you um, build that activity into something more. Um, and then we're going to learn a little bit about some of the resources that are here in your own backyard library in Santa Monica. Um, and then we're going to have a conversation about, you know, different ways we can use all these resources to create meaningful programs for our community. Um, so that's that's what we're up to. I'm going to start. <laughs> um, so I'm going to maybe share my screen and maybe Susanna, do you want to throw the, the timeline link into the chat if you want to go kind of um, peruse it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, can people see a timeline on their screen. Yes, I see some nodding. Great. Okay. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, the sort of like the, I don't know, the, the kind of motivating object of all this work that we're doing is this city hall mural that's in Santa Monica. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's a mural uh, that's been around for quite a while um, from the WPA period. Um, and this timeline does not deal with the origins of the mural, which we'll get to in a, in a moment, but just sort of some of the most recent history of it. Um, there have been protests of it going back to 2015, 2016. There's been a sort of a long series of different kinds of city council actions trying to figure out how to um, resolve um, the controversies. Um, around sometime last year, our group was kind of hired, commissioned to run a public program, public process 
um, to generate ideas really kind of and hopefully generate meaningful dialogue and healing around sort of, you know, what is this, what is this mural, what does it represent, what are the histories that are present there, representations that are present there, what are the representations and histories that we'd like to see um, in, in our city. And so this event is kind of part of that process. So if you want to kind of get into the weeds of that timeline, that is a resource we put together for you. Um, just to kind of talk about our process and where we're going, um, we have sort of like a four pronged approach, you could say. Um, one is public programs like this one. Second, this is sort of maybe the most experimental of what things we're trying to do. Um, we created a thing we're calling a working circle, which is essentially just a group of concerned people who have connections to Santa Monica, who care about this mural for different reasons, um, who've agreed to, to dialogue with one another, to meet um, every couple of weeks, really, uh, for six months. Um, and at the end of it, that group is going to um, review a lot of different kinds of information, brainstorm together, and then synthesize it. And hopefully we will re release a report in June um, with the ideas that are generated out of that working circle. Um, so it's meant to be kind of a generative space where we can kind of produce um, new approaches and th things that we can do to move forward. Hey, Rustin, can you make that this part of it bigger? It's very small for us. Yes, let me, let me try. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, that, perfect. Getting bigger. Yeah, okay. bigger. <laughs> perfect. That big That's, exactly. yeah, <laughs> okay. That's excellent. Um, okay. So as that working circle is convening, we're also doing lots of uh, background interviews with um, individuals and small groups. Um, and that's something where you can connect with us. All these public programs are kind of opportunities for different people in Santa Monica to meet this team, meet the working circle and get connected in different ways. So if you have ideas of folks we should be talking to, we're always happy to get, get, get them. Um, and then the last piece is the piece that we're here today to do, which is sort of where we designed this tool to just gather a lot of different feedback and ideas from as broad a community as possible. And we thought as long as we're going to kind of design a survey, why don't we make it into something that could actually be an interesting uh, activity for reflection and something, um, and as long as we're going to make an activity for reflection, why don't we try to create that as a resource that different kinds of educators and people who work with the public could use easily in their work and make a kind of resource guide that wraps around that. So that's sort of all the, <laughs> I know that's kind of like a lot of background. But that's sort of um, all the sort of things that are going into like why why are we doing what we're doing? Um, the goal of it really is to kind of produce um, produce dialogue, produce new ideas, and kind of figure out you know how do how do we kind of tell the story of Santa Monica that 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 we most want to tell um, as a collective. Okay, so now I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna stop sharing again. Um, the next piece. Unless you have something you want, anybody else in the group wants to add into that, we'll kind of jump into um, actually doing, you know, introducing the activity itself. Anybody else uh, from Metsley need to add anything? Did I miss anything? Okay, awesome, great. Okay, cool. So um, here it is. Um, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Um, dun, 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 dun. And oh, by the way, this is one thing I did miss. There is a website. Um, I think someone hopefully can throw that into the chat if you want to kind of get the full list of all the events that we're doing, RSVP for them, um, find out more about the working circle. I will say really quickly, actually, I should mention this. Um, hold on, I'm going to stop sharing one more time really quick. Um, a lot of the working circle is here right now. Um, so if you are a working circle person and you feel like you want to be identified, um, go ahead and raise your hand so people have a sense of those folks in the room. Cool. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Sorry, I'm like kind of really zoom, <laughs> zooming around. Um, okay, so here's our activity. Um, and so there's sort of two ways to think about this. Um, I once was going like bike camping and I was like trying to get all this gear for that trip. And like the guy who was like working at the store was like, there's two ways to do it. You can know what you're doing or you can not know what you're doing. And they're both fun. <laughs> so I want to sort of introduce that as sort of like a way to think about this activity is that, you know, these, these murals, these images, they hold a lot. There's a lot of different stuff in there. They touch on so many different aspects of our city. 
of our history, of our nation, um, of art history, of different forms of representation, of different periods in history from the kind of first contact of um, colonial powers in the United States or become form you know, pr 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 uh, prior to the United States up through you know the WPA, the, the program that created this mural and so on and so forth. And then we'll show you a bunch of resources that kind of help you connect this mural to all those different kinds of stories. But you can also do this activity with zero prior knowledge. And that's sort of how we designed it as something that could be meaningful just as an exercise in looking um, an exercise in trying to describe what you see and talking about what you see to other people. Um, so the kind of history and there's some really interesting ways of thinking about, you know, why. So this image that you're seeing in the center of this is a sort of cover sheet is just um, a picture of City Hall. Uh, so you sort of see this big mural. Um, there's a left side um, that deals, uh, I think people informally or actually sort of formally call it you know, recreation. Um, and on the right side, there's a side that is sort of about the origins of um, Santa Monica. Some people call it, you know, the naming side because um, it sort of deals with, um, well, I won't even actually talk about what it deals with. <laughs> I should, I've already said too much. Um, so here's the basic idea is like, you can do these worksheets and you can drop them off in History Hall and then to the receptionist there, you can go to any uh, locations of the library at Santa Monica, uh, at Maine, Pico, or Montana branches and drop them off there. Or you can just text them to us, email them to us, or you can do this whole thing online and that's what we'll do just now. Um, and so what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna do this worksheet together and then we're gonna kind of talk about that experience. Um, so there's three parts to it. And this is actually really important. Um, if you do have yourself or a group, if you can, run this activity, send us your feedback by April 1st, we will be able to actually use that um, to inform the working circle. Uh, so we'll actually have a big indexed version of all of the responses. I think we already have um, you know, really since a couple weeks ago, we have 60 of them so far. Um, we hope to have, you know, hundreds, ideally. We really hope that many different people are able to engage in this activity. Um, so, so there is sort of an emergency to it. So the activity has two parts, um, or three parts. The first two are sort of identical, but dealing with different parts of the mural. Um, and it's really just asking three questions. You know, you look at this image and we're asking, what do you see in this image? And that seems like a very simple question, but when we run this exercise in person, it's been astounding the different kinds of things that, that jump out to different people who are coming at this with different, different perspectives, different histories. Second question is, what do you feel is missing in this picture? Um, and that we want that to be, you know, an open-ended question. Um, whether it's a specific historical event, a style, an emotion, an idea, any of those things are valid. Um, and the third is, how does it make you feel about being in City Hall or in Santa Monica? And I guess this is a, the part where kind of the sighting is kind of relevant. You know, the, the location of this mural isn't in, in, you know, a portfolio. It's in an art gallery. It's in City Hall. So what does that hey, mean for this image? To hey, Rustin, can you? Location? Um, yeah. repeat the last, but you're cutting out in and out a little bit. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So the third question here, can people hear me now? Yeah, I think if you just go a little this? bit slower, it'll be better. <laughs> okay. And I'm so fast talker, so apologies. And I, I just remembered that there's simultaneously trend <laughs> interpretation. So apologies to the interpreter. I'll slow down a little bit. Um, the third question is just how does the image make you feel about being in City Hall or in Santa Monica. And the reason why that question is there is because this image is not just in a gallery or in a portfolio somewhere, but it's located in, as you enter City Hall. So it has a particular gravitas, a particular kind of um, location that people are going to be seeing it and encountering it. And so we're asking people to kind of think about what does this image say about the, that experience of being in City Hall. The second page of the work of the, the feedback activity is literally the same questions. Um, but it's with the other half of the mural. So this is obviously a very different scene with very different um, different things to talk about in that image. Um, what, what do you see in it? What's missing? How does it make you feel about being in City Hall or Santa Monica? Um, so those are sort of questions. These first two sheets are about you know, responding to this thing that exists. And then this third question is really something that we hope is offered in the spirit of, of imagination. Um, so, you know, you, you've responded to what exists and have you, what you see in there and what you think could be different. 
what you think is missing. But now we ask you to think, you know, if you could imagine some other thing, and this is truly meant to be more of like a, you know, we're not gonna just like make the thing that you write. It's more about like using your imagination, like in your dreams, like what is the thing um, that you could, that you would imagine creating or commissioning that would represent a different history of Santa Monica? What, what would that look like? What would it include? Um, you can either draw or write below. And it's meant to be an open-ended question that, you know, a six-year-old could do, um, but also, you know, a 66-year-old could do. Um, second, where would you place that artwork? Where it would it be around City Hall? Would it be elsewhere in Santa Monica? And why would you put it there? And this last one is more about, so for us to kind of, um, kind of put in together with all of our kind of um, data that we're collecting is just for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and where your perspective is coming from. And again, that is a wide open question. You, we, we don't want anyone to share anything that they don't feel like sharing. But I think for many people, they, they feel like their, their perspective is really embodied in a specific um, viewpoint and they would like us to know that. So that's a space for you to do that. Um, and then we do really love to know your zip code <laughs> and email address um, so we can kind of you know tabulate this stuff. Um, so that's the activity in a, in a I don't know, fairly large nutshell. <laughs> um, and now I'm going to uh, back out a little bit and ask us all to take a few minutes, maybe seven minutes, to actually really do this exercise right now. Um, but because you don't have this PDF in front of you, we have an online version um, that I think will be appearing oh, in your chat right now. Um, am I still sharing? Good. OK, no, I'm not. So here is um, the form in English. We also have a form, a version in Spanish. And you know, I have found, I've done um, my early, earlier career was as, as a youth educator doing after school programs about architecture and design. Um, and so I've always found that you know, when doing teacher trainings, even though you, you, know, you might think that you're like, oh, I know exactly how this would go for my students. The best way to kind of understand um, how an activity might work and troubleshoot it is to really do it yourself and figure out you know, what are the, you know, how did that feel to do? What else did I feel like I would want to say to my students um, when I'm doing it? Um, so I encourage you to, to do that right now. Um, we're going to take a little break for um, eight minutes, let's do it, and rejoin at 6.30. Does that work for people? Yeah. Okay. Um, so feel free to keep your camera on, turn it off, do what you like. We didn't really think about putting on like music or anything for this this segment, but um, if anyone feels like uh, putting something on. Ross, um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, are we to do the whole exercise in eight minutes? Is that the assignment? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's the goal. If you feel like you need more, more time, by all means, that's, that's useful to know for yourself. But also, you know, I think we'll rejoin and see how far we got in eight minutes. I just want we have a bunch of other stuff to get through. So we, you know, May not be enough time. Yeah, just checking. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, Mario. Oh, you're muted. If we've already submitted our three sheets oh. electronically, do we do it anyway? I don't see it. There's no reason not to. It's not, it it's right. definitely won't function like voting. There's no way to like <laughs> pack the ballot. I think you might see different things each time you, you do it. It's really about generating ideas and texture more than like a, a vote or something like that. By all means, do it again. But if you feel like you got it, by all means, take, go and get a drink or, you know, <laughs> chill out too.
And we're just going to take a couple more minutes, if that's cool with you all. No, okay, um, pencils down, <laughs> as they said, no, I mean, feel free to, to keep it up and you don't need to submit it right away, but, um, but we're going to move on a little bit with the program. Um, and I'm sure, well, hopefully, if you did it right, you now have a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, and you're and you're really curious about what you know what is in this thing like what are these things supposed to be where did it come from um so we, we wanted to resource people i mean i think that it's really valuable to get that fresh you know people who come into city hall they don't have any additional information presently um and so that kind of fresh interpretation is actually a really valuable thing to hold on to but it, there's also lots of places to take this once you've looked at this um it's a it's a document that i think um you know can 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 use some unpacking. Um, so what we put together is a kind of um, resource list, and and I, I I know I just sort of teased you by saying you have questions, and I'm sure you do, and we will get to them in just a second. But first, I'm just going to give you a quick whirlwind tour of these resources, and then we'll have all the questions come out. Um, so I'm going to show my share my screen one more time, um, and I think uh, the link to these resources hopefully will show up in the chat and we'll also be sending it out to everybody who registered for the event. Um, but here we go. Okay. And I'll try to zoom in again um, so we all as good a look as possible to this. So it's, we men, mean this, first of all, I should say this is kind of a living document. Um, so if we encounter or you encounter a resource that is really, really useful, um, we do hope to keep on adding to it. At the same time, we are trying to keep it fairly limited. So it's not like here teachers, like a thousand links for you to spend all day trying to explore. It is a bit of a curated list. Um, so I'll just walk you through it really quick. Um, first, um, if you do do this worksheet, and I, I've been actually meant, asked to mention this, which is that while classroom teachers, um, we think this activity would fit really well with a lot of like California state history, um, you know, curriculum rubrics, we also think that there's a lot of value in doing this in an educational setting that is not a classroom. So you have a community group, you have a church, you have coworkers, you have anybody that you think might value, value doing this exercise. We really encourage you to share it with them. Um, so that said, the, these are kind of like the way that this is written is sort of addressed to educators. Um, so if you do a, a big batch of surveys, um, like with a classroom or something like that, we would love, though it's obviously not mandatory, but it would be really helpful to us if you made a little cover sheet of like, here's, you know, here's what we're, you know, we're all from, you know, PS24, whatever it is. Um, that's really helpful. Okay. We've grouped these links now into a couple different categories. So the first bunch is sort of just historical information about the mural itself, the WPA and the artist who produced it, um, Stan McDonald Wright. Um, so this first link, and I'll just start walking through these guys, um, is from the public archive, and it's just a really basic physical description of, of the mural, its location, where it's built, what, what it's made of. Um, the second link is about the specific um, art material um, that was used to create it, a process called petrochrome that is described here as similar to paint by numbers, but is significantly more <laughs> complex, I think, um, basically tinted cement. 
um, sort of was invented um, by the artist uh, kind of in a, certain, in a sense for these projects with the WPA and it's sort of in some ways primarily used in the WPA projects around Southern California. Um, here is a, a link from the art story, which is a pretty exhaustive um, history of the artist himself and you can sort of see all the rest of his work, which is, um, you know, very varied in its style, also biography, things like that. Um, you can really get pretty deep into his life if you choose to. Um, and then the last, I think this is a really useful one in particular for high school teachers, is um, a resource. Um, this is created by the California Historical Society in collaboration with the Living New Deal. Um, and it's about the New Deal in California. And so there's a lot of resources here about the New Deal program, um, about you know, the Work Progress Administration, um, the federal government, um, ways of thinking about it, and kind of how much of the New Deal you see in the built environment all around us. And one thing that is particularly useful here, I will say, is that there's a lot of teacher activities that are kind of already well well developed. So worksheets, ways of thinking about um, going through and documenting um, the New Deal in your own in your own backyard. So that's sort of the first chunk of resources. Um, the second are really about sort of um, this visual trope or representational trope of Native people. Um, so you could kind of describe it as the kneeling Indian that you see also known as the kind of a noble savage trope. Um, and so these are coming from a few different angles. Um, this first one is um, about reclaiming native truth, a project to dispel America's myths and misconceptions. So it's a really um, interesting and deep report recently completed um, about representation of, you know, representation versus reality essentially of native people in, um, in North America. Hey, Rustin, sorry, just yeah. put on just a, Tad, again, I know we're trying to rush through, but just keep keep slowing down a little bit. Okay, sorry, yeah. I will slow down. Okay, this next page is um, put together actually for our sort of like first kind of proto event um, by our own Joel Garcia. This is um, different way, it's called Prisons of Indigeneity and it's actually sort of a resource about resources. So there's a bunch of different ways of thinking about and learning about um, the many different ways that, that you can think about indigeneity. Um, and representation are here. There's also very recently a, um, a guide from the New York Times um, about how to teach about Native American fight for representation, repatriation and recognition that uses um, popular images, uh, popular media, things like reservation dogs um, to kind of as a gateway for talking about these issues. Um, next, I know it's sort of cheating to include a Wikipedia <laughs> entry, but I think it is really useful in this case um, to kind of, if you want to do a deep dive on sort of like, what does it mean for a, for a Native person to be kneeling in a representation, as you can sort of see in this historical painting, The Death of General Wolf, it's a very well used trope and it has a really deep history and it's, this is a really thorough and interesting um, history of that, of that representational trope. And then lastly, in this category, um, this is a teaching guide. Um, that's created by the Yale National Initiative to strengthen teaching in public schools. Um, and it, it's particularly interesting and useful because it is specifically about teaching American history using, um, using images and the, the rationale for using images as a way to engage young people in, a, in deep and complicated conversations about history, where sometimes assigning texts um, can be uh, not as productive as, as things for young people to, to analyze. So there's a lot of different um, pedagogical techniques and ways of thinking about how to use images, how questions kind of spiral out from them, and how to think about um, structuring a conversation about an image. Um, so that's something I definitely recommend, especially for people who are teaching it in the high school or college age, to spend some time with. It's, it's a really wonderful resource. Um, okay, now we're moving. Am I going too fast still? Am I okay? A little bit? <laughs> um, yeah, you just have to keep reminding yourself to okay. slow down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah, and I'm almost done. So um, we'll you can catch our breath in just a moment. Um, so the last, and again, obviously, you know, this, this image, these images really hit on so many really big, big topics. Um, so this next is a, a, some, some resources about early California history and the mission system and Spanish arrival. Um, so first one is will appear again later in our guide about like places you can visit. Um, but here's Curabunga Village, uh, Village Springs, which is located in Santa Monica and is the um, springs that are that are depicted in the mural. I guess that, you know, there's sort of a question of like whether you can say that anything is 
for sure anything in an image, but people, many, many, I think there's broad consensus that, that, this, that, the, um, that the water that's depicted in, in the mural that's emerging from the ground is in fact uh, the Kuruvuna Springs. Um, so here's the website about that place, the Cultural Center and the History. There's a really wonderful resource that you know, many of you are probably more familiar with than I am even, um, called Teaching California. It's a different, different um, curricular units about different aspects of California history um, that's kind of an updated um, approach. And so there's resources that are targeted here specifically for different grade levels, so grade three, grade four, up to grade, I think, five in this case. There's another, the next one I'll show you is for high school age, but you know, there's really specific rubrics um, for different grade levels of teaching California state history, and these are ways of getting into those things. So talking about you know, why did people settle here? Um, what were the impact of, of the missions on indigenous traditions and beliefs? Um, some various perspectives on what the missions were, um, different aspects of um, organization, systems of government of native people in North America, um, and also even broader, if you wanna get into like the full on Western expansion of the United States, um, there's resources for all of those things here. And there's um, teaching guides, um, worksheets, activities, the whole shebang. Um, next, there's a couple of resources from KCET that, um, that are really, really valuable. There's a, a television show, if you've not seen it before, called Lost LA, um, that deals with a lot of, I don't know, I wouldn't really say they're like <laughs> forgotten histories of, but, you know, under, underrepresented, under, underremembered histories of, of California. Um, so there's an entire um, episode that's about a half hour about the Tongva before and after Spanish arrival and lesson plans that relate to that. Um, these next two actually come from a member of our working circle. Um, we recommend, actually several of these have come from members of the working circle in different, different forms, I should say. Um, but uh, these ones are two books that, I, that are, you know, obviously a little harder to access, but you'll be happy to know that there are copies available, four of them on the shelves right now at the Santa Monica Library. Um, this first one is called The First Angelinos about the Gabrielino Indians of Los Angeles. Um, the second one is called Oh My Ancestor, Recognition and Renewal for the Gabrielino Tongva People of the Los Angeles Area. So, you know, these are for if you want to get, you know, even deeper, if you want to do independent research and get, get into this topic for real. Um, these are highly recommended. Now, moving to a broader kind of uh, resources about Santa Monica history. And one thing that we discovered, and we're actually interested if you all have extra resources we can put in here, we couldn't find a lot of teaching guides um, or teaching just sort of like mainstream, I guess you could say, Santa Monica development history. Um, so we're really interested to kind of build this out. But there are a few really interesting resources about beach culture and access. Um, again, this is a Lost LA um, episode that deals with um, segregated beaches in Santa Monica. And then, of course, um, the prior reframe project was called Belmar History and Art, um, a public art and civic commemoration project. And um, that project actually is actually, okay. Um, there's actually a whole set of curricula um, connected with, with that project. Um, this link used to go to directly to the curriculum. I'll, fi I'll fix the link so you go directly to the, cur the curriculum. Um, now it's going presently to the, um, to the City of Santa Monica page. I'm going to skip that one because that site seems to be down. Okay, the last set of resources, I'm sorry, this has gone on a little long, is about public art and monuments. So there's an organization called Monument Lab that many of us on this team have had a lot of interaction um, and dealing with. Oh, I was a fellow of theirs a few years ago. Um, and they produced um, a very well resourced and very thorough audit of, of monuments throughout the entire uh, entirety of the United States. Um, so that's an online and printed guide. Um, but they also produced an educator's guide that gives lots of meaningful and interesting ways of thinking about how to use that audit and use that tool in your own work. So you can sort of, as, as probably most of you are aware, there is a huge, um, there is a huge, um, I don't know, I guess a huge reckoning, I'd say, with our kind of commemorative and memorial landscape. And so this was sort of an effort to kind of get a sense of like, what actually is out there? Who is being memorialized? In what ways? Um, what, are the, what are the gaps there? What do we, how do we think about that? Um, so this is a really wonderful resource for thinking about um, how we use uh, the you know, public space and public art to remember our history. 
Um, and then this is a really nice guide that was written up by um, one of our working circle members for uh, ways of doing visual analysis. So it's a series of prompts. Um, you know, how do you think about figures? How you, and their posture, gestures, expression, um, scale, setting. Um, how you think about the style, the medium, um, colors, and then the context and the content of your work. All sorts of guiding questions for helping structure that conversation about you know what are we seeing when we look at, at this history, at this at this at this mural. And then lastly, this um, is a resource that I think is sort of floating around all of them. I think it's a really useful exercise um, to do. This one in particular comes from Americans for the Arts, a national advocacy organization around artwork in, um, in America. But you know, there's many, many, many of them out there and many of you have probably done this already in your own workplace um, or school. Um, but it's a way of sort of analyzing and reflecting on the different privileges that you and or the group that you're working with might have, um, you know, whether it's citizenship, age, um, ability and disability, you know, religion, race, sexual orientation, income, um, gender identity, and political affiliation. So ways of thinking about privilege and how that um, you know, reflects what you see, what you don't see um, you know, when you experience you know, our, our world. Okay. I think, okay, two last resources just to mention them. Um, there is currently an exhibit up at Santa Monica College that we, you know, if you, if you are interested in taking this conversation into uh, representations of, um, of Indigenous people, of Native Americans, of First People, any of those things, um, it's highly recommended. It's a really beautiful um, display of photography and storytelling um, called Project 562, Changing the Way We See Native America. Um, there's resources here about, you know, how to visit how to visit um, that gallery. And then lastly, um, the historic Belmar Park. Um, there's a permanent art sculpture there, a resurrection for stanzas by April Banks and also interpretive panels by Allison Rose Jefferson, Dr. Allison Rose Jefferson along that path. Okay, so I probably went on a little too long, but hopefully you now feel <laughs> like there's a lot of places to go. Oh, I should mention, we also try to compile um, all of the videos together in one place. Um, videos, as many classroom teachers have noted, <laughs> can be a really productive and easy way to kind of get into a topic um, and provide a bunch of context. So here's, um, you know, um, a bunch of different videos. Um, this one from Santa Monica Conservancy deals explicitly, specifically with the mural. Um, this one is about the history of Native California. And then there's these episodes of Lost LA. And if you haven't seen um, the animated kids show, City of Ghosts, um, it is a wonderful resource for talking about uh, history in Los Angeles. Okay, um, that's a little bit breathless, but hopefully you now have lots of questions floating in your um, in your minds. Yeah. That we can do. And uh, we didn't do, we should have introduced um, from the beginning, Kathy Lowe, the librarian from Santa Monica Public Library is with us uh, to also talk about the resources uh, about local history on offer at the Santa Monica Public Library. Um, so then we want to hand it off to Kathy. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. I see uh, familiar faces and new faces. So nice meeting everyone. Uh, I'm gonna keep it really short. Uh, so I'm here to talk about some of the resources available in your public library, but also in the library land, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, uh oh, where did that go? Wow, well, I'm sorry. I thought I had it up. Okay, just a sec. Okay, I think I got it. Hello? Yes. I don't know what happened to my link. Uh -oh. Okay. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't see the screen yet. And I've lost the Zoom screen, weirdly. Um, if you like sort of scroll on the top or the bottom of the screen, it may pop Show up again. Up. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. This, of course, delays everything. My apology. 
Can you see me now? Oh, so this is fair. I just see you, but I don't see your screen. Okay. So I'm not sure what to do here because I was able to see you guys a second ago. Ooh. Um, um I can share my screen. Why don't I Okay, you have it? Jump in. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Kathy, there's uh, in your lower bar in your computer, there's probably a little tab that says Zoom. Uh, just click on that and you'll get the Zoom window back. That's what I clicked, but I'm still in the meeting. I know I am. Right, because we can yeah. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so yeah, so Naomi has, has shared her screen so and we can... Um, we have your title slide. Okay, um, great. So, so I, I'll just talk just, about that. Okay. Yeah. So we can move to the second slide. So when people think about library, obviously what librarians do uh, is recommended reads, right? Bibliographies and stuff like that. So the second slide is uh, Santa Monica Public Library Indigenous <clears throat> Heritage Month reads. And I have put um, a link there uh, so as, so this is one of many, many examples. Uh, you all can Google, you know, best Native American or best indigenous month reads and uh, nearly all the public libraries and other libraries uh, have, uh, have recommended reads, okay? Uh, and then the third slide, for example, is not from a library, but from a book uh, blog. It's uh, very popular. It's called Book Riot. And to celebrate this month, uh, they have recommended 10 graphic novels. Okay, again, the link is right there. Okay, and then the fourth one um, is from the our neighbor, Los Angeles Public Library, Young Adult Books. So these are just some of the examples uh, that uh, that I just want people to be uh, to be aware of. Again, please, uh, you know, uh, feel free to Google, and you will find a lot of examples. Okay, okay, and then now I want to share something that I've discovered recently. Uh, it is a new Facebook group, and by new, I mean really new. This was uh, set up about three weeks ago. And there's a link, um, you, I believe you can, I can click on that or Naomi can click on that. Yeah, we're, uh, putting, right? the, we're putting the links in the live, in the chat as well. Okay, go. thank you. So this is a, a group by the California State Library. Uh, so it's brand new. Um, I have not seen a lot of activities yet because I think it's so new. Uh, but again, I, I thought this, you know, this would be interesting information to share. It's set up for the California Tribal Libraries and Archives community. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next slide. And this is such a uh, delicious, if you will, discovery for me. Uh, it's the UCLA Mapping Indigenous LA project. So again, I just want to uh, introduce it um, and please, please feel free to explore. Uh, it's, a, it's fascinating to me um, and I hope to you because the history of First Peoples, when we talk about that, the stories are linked, forever linked to the land. And this mapping project, uh, I think, uh, is a great example of how communities and uh, academic institutions uh, and other organizations can come together and, uh, and link into you know, history of the land to, to forge a more inclusive uh, path forward. So, um, I, you know, um, I did this, this was like a 
black hole to me. I once I started looking into it, uh, you know, and I looked away. I'm like, what an hour has passed. Oh. So anyway, so I hope everyone will take some time to enjoy that. And the last one is uh, about Santa Monica Public Library's local history room. Uh, we do have a special collection. Uh, about 4,000 items. And you can read about it in the description here. Uh, it is a research and non-circulating collection. Um, so like all historical collections, um, some of the materials uh, may depict events that are now upsetting or difficult to read. Uh, you may find languages that are uh, insensitive, inaccurate, or harmful. Um, but again, I, it's in the collection to, to tell us about what happened and to uh, hopefully guide us forward. And uh, in closing, I just want to say that, you know, the please, please, as always, we welcome and we, in fact, rely on your comments and suggestions to expand the scope of the library's uh, collection. And we want to build out an inclusive collection representing all the communities and uh, preserve histories at the same time. So thank you. If you have any questions, uh, please email the library or email me directly, uh, kathy.low at santamonica.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, so much for those resources. Um, so yeah, so Rostin, uh, we wanna open it up for questions. Um, and I think that if you, um, raise your hand, uh, you can verbalize your question, or if you want to put it in, in the chat, uh, we will sort of, you know, respond to it from there. Um, so just sort of take it, take it away. <laughs> and we've, we've presented a lot, um, but any ideas that you have for using these resources, the activity guide, or any questions you have for us or for Kathy. Yes, Roger. Well, this is a technical question. Uh, at the very beginning, <clears throat> I, I, I had problems accessing the, que the questions that we're supposed to answer. And then when I got back to here, I'm not even sure it got, got recorded uh, what I, I wrote. So I, I, I don't know how all that works. So it's a technical question. So I, I don't want to belabor that point, but uh, I don't know if anybody else has that problem. Well, I'm going to share my screen really quick. If, you, if it worked, you should see something like this that says, thank you for sending us your feedback. So if you didn't ever see a screen like that, it probably oh. didn't get submitted. Um, okay. So you wanted to keep on, there's always a next button at the bottom. So you wanted to sort of keep on looking for that and moving to, towards the end. And then there is finally a button that will say submit. So thank you for, the, for clarifying that or for giving us the opportunity to clarify that. Any other thoughts, ideas you might have are also welcome if you have thoughts of like how you, how you might use this resource or what might be useful for you in, in running the uh, 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 feedback activity session. Okay, well, I just might have to submit it independently of this because I got confused with the process. I wanted to ask Kathy what, one other question is, do you, uh, in the last page, I was concerned that, that you really didn't talk about sort of a, a other historical context for the uh, mural that is the arch architecture the wpa and all those things i guess that's included in your last slide uh right but that was a rather general thing where they're rather specific about about the uh, native culture that was preceding that so is there anything specific that you might link to uh to, to learn more about uh, the history of the architecture and the library i mean the uh, uh city hall and and the wpa well, they, uh, they went really fast because of a uh, time limit. Um, in, the library had a whole website devoted to the murals that are in the library. Uh, 
So I'm not sure if the website is still uh, there. Uh, I can search for it. And then if I find it, I, I'll put a link um, in the chat. Uh, but this, the, the main library, the building I'm in right now, he's 16 years old. And, uh, and Roger knows a lot about how the library murals was created and then moved to the Smithsonian and then moved back to the library, you know, at this location when the when this main library was built and opened 16 years ago. So. So yeah, I just want to clarify. So so Kathy's talking about there's another mural. There's the yes. the mural by uh, the same artist um, right. who did the mural in the city hall. Right. Who was that mural was commissioned as part of the um, federal art project. It was part of the New Deal, um, and so that's why in our our list of resources we included information about the New Deal because of a larger art program that uh, commissioned many, many, many artworks in the 30s and early 40s. And so, um, and there's another mural by the same artist from the same period that uh, there's been a long, this was a long history with that it was removed and then returned. And so that is um, on, on view in the library, the Santa Monica Public Library. So it's a separate mural. Our, the reframe uh, city hall mural process is about the mural in the, the city hall. And then there is um, another question in the, in the chat about, um, you know, so this, this reframe city hall mural process, we're looking at the, at the mural in the city hall, uh, responding to it, thinking about its depictions and thinking about what kinds of new, uh, what, what responses to it might look like. And so if there are new uh, mural commissions, new artworks that are commissioned, uh, that would come in the, you know, later. Our process right now is really just a reflection and discussion process. But in the activity, we invite people to imagine what a new artwork would be. And so it can be anything, really. We hope it would be, uh, we're thinking about artworks that would represent Santa Monica history um, or be in some way in response to uh, or instead of the uh, mural in city that is currently in City Hall. So that that potential imagining new artwork is not limited in content, but we are sort of thinking about it as a response and as a sort of um, thinking about Santa Monica history in general as the sort of general uh, general topic of it. But it could it could depict anything. We want you to imagine. We want people who do this activity to um, have a sort of an expansive um, thinking about this. And I, yeah, I want to add, um, since we're actually, we're at time, we, we, we had so much to talk about that we haven't had a lot of time to talk about it. But I want to say that if you, um, so the, uh, all of the links to the um, PDFs that we showed that you can print or the links to the Google form versions um, that's all on the website, the City Hall Mural website, which I put in the chat again. And um, if you do do it with, an, with a group and you submit, you can, you, you can return the paper copies to, uh, at any Santa Monica Public Library and to the City Hall locations. Um, so please, please return it to us and let us know that you uh, have done that. So. Yeah, Susanna, and I, I see a question. Sorry, Susanna, I'm wondering, since a lot of people are still on the call and there's the chat is really active, I didn't know if the team uh, would be interested in going over a few minutes to talk about some of that material and uh, Lydia has her hand up, et cetera. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to Lydia. Um, so we can, we can stay on, but we are at time. So if people have to drop off, that is understandable. So yeah, Lydia. 
Thank you. Um, I so appreciate these resources. Um, it, it's really expansive and definitely much needed. And much to this mural, I think that <clears throat> the great divide of you know what to do with it, pro and con, move it, take it down, not take it down. I just want to speak and share with the process in hopes that the people that left, we have very dear friends, uh, relatives in the community who want uh, to the, the mural to remain. And I think that I best try to explain that it's not a, a for and against you personally, um, being of the land and being indigenous and having a, a different mind, you know, thought to this. It's that the right questions for me are more open-ended personally that why isn't there a museum? Why can't we create a museum for the families who had farmed the land and, you know, came to make a new life? And, you know, the name, the named families that, um, who, who within the, the, the past, the present and the future have beautiful stories to share. So I don't see it as, um, you know, right, wrong, blame, or, <laughs> you know, take it down, put it, put that up. It's really, to me, it's really the indigenous local tribal people to decide that. My, my opinion is that there's much more to gain from remedying um, some of the ills from the past. And lastly, um, I'm hoping that we can have a place or a space where they feel safe enough to remain in the conversation where we can make some of these wrongs right. And um, how very healing would that be? And that's my humble opinion. And that's my prayer. And, um, and I thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, and I, I think that like, but that, that is part of our intention uh, with the activity, right? You know, the activity is not, is not a s survey, right? It's to invite people to really think and respond. Um, to the murals and think about what else, um, what is what is there, what is missing, what else could we be um, and what, talking about and doing. So, I think um, I don't see any other hands, um, and we're you know over time. So I I think that we. Um, will uh we are definitely going to follow up with all of, you know all of the resources that we shared we're going to follow up in the email to everybody who registered for the eventbrite if you did not register for the eventbrite and you want to um uh if you, and you want to receive these resources in your email please put your email in the chat uh, i should have said that earlier but we will go to, out to everybody who registered on the eventbrite um, and I think that's, yeah, who, I, not sure. Yes. Oh, can you hear me or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, thank you for all, all the information. And I, I came into, um, this a little bit after it started. I'm Jesse. I'm a children's artist, um, and educator. And of course it's, so important to have um, uh, things about Native American people, of course. Um, but I, I also, at the same time, um, was wondering what also the Latino community in, in this neighborhood um, would also like to see. Um, so I, I was, I was um, thinking too, like, like things that represent our culture, um, music, uh, um, the folklore, that, that kind of thing. Um, and, and also I, I, I'm thinking out loud, um, also I, I, I think it would be um, great to have something that's also done by children that children can be a part of it as well. I I I know that I I as a children's artist would would love to to see that and, and include all of the people in our community as well as the our Latino community. So I just I just wanted to give that that input and thank you for your resources as well. 
Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Um, all right, so I, th I think that that concludes our event for today. Um, obviously, you have a way to get in touch with us, and we would love to you know, continue to be in dialogue with you all, um, especially hearing uh, how you're using these activities and um, how we can resource you to, to use them even more. Um, so as Susanna mentioned, we'll be following up to everyone who put their emails in the chat or um, registered um, with all these links so you can um, get all this, all this stuff. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the team. It was a lot of information and it was great. Now, Susanna, the meeting chat, do we need to copy that out or is that automatically going to be saved with the Zoom?